Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode we are going to have another C++ 20 quickie. Uh, I talk about a little bit more of things that have come in the standard library in C++ 20 and I have to say I'm actually pretty excited about these because I feel like it demonstrates a little bit of the growth of the standard library here. So I recently covered the mathematical constants in the numbers header that was added in C++20, and I have to be honest, I don't know what order I'm going to air these in, so that might be a future episode, but it is one that I recorded very recently. So here in the C++20 bit header, which is new for C++20, we get bit cast, which uh, no one has implemented yet as far as I know. Uh, there will be a future episode on that someday and is pow2, seal2, floor2, log2, and then some interesting ones. We've got the bitwise left rotation and bitwise right rotation. And that is um, going to be pretty handy if you're doing anything like implementing an emulator and you're currently you would shift off the bits and then check to see what bits were shifted off and rotate them around yourself or something like that when really rotate left and rotate right are kind of fundamental things that every CPU implements, or at least every modern CPU does. And this, I think, as I started to say earlier, kind of uh, illustrates the growth of the library. This is a new header, and now we're not getting anything in a uh, nested namespace here, but that's fine. So it's standard std uh, colon colon rotl in the bit header. And this is no discard, because arguably, why would you ever call this function if you plan to throw away the result? So it makes sense. This is returning a value. It had to perform some work to return this value. This should be no discard. Um, and it is a const expert no except function. So this pretty much covers all the bases. We know that this function cannot throw an exception. We know that it can be used in a compile time context. And we know that it is likely an error in the code if you discard the result of it. So it takes some value by value and it takes the amount that you would like to rotate it as an integer um, by value as well. And it seems that you can do a rotate left uh, negative, which would ultimately be a rotate right, I guess. Yes, so it automatically calls rotate right in that case to keep all the logic correct. So that's cool. I'm pretty excited about that. And rotate right, we already mentioned, these count 0, count 1, count 0, count 1, number of consecutive bits starting from the beginning or the end. And notice it's most significant or least significant, even though it is left and right. When we're talking about the representation here, the leftmost bit is always going to be the most significant bit. So this is... Uh, doesn't matter if you're working on big Indian or Lind little Indian, we're talking about how we represent numbers. And then pop count. And I'm pretty excited about pop count as well because this is const expert. And before this being const expert, you had to either write your own pop count function, which is not terribly difficult, but I actually do need this in my ARM emulator, or you needed to um, use standard bit set. Let's just look at that real quick. This would have been a relatively normal thing to, uh, to do, although it's a little bit kind of heavy handed. So if I'm going to, well, I mean, we can play with this real quick. If I've got the value one, then I have one bit set. If I've got the value zero, then I've got zero bits set. Two is also going to be one bit set. 3 is going to be the 2 and 1 bits set, and I'm just repeating myself at this point. But standard bit set could be optimized away, wasn't const expert, no guarantee that it would be, and depending on the context, relatively difficult to work with. The fact that I have to tell it the number of bits that I want to be in the bit set and then initialize it with this thing and get the count, that's a little bit of a pain. Uh, we can see, I think GCC trunk does implement this. This is does quite a much better job, yeah. Um, I 
Actually, this is interesting. Uh, Svene, we are being Svene'd out here. Let's figure out why. So it says pop count of T. And let's see, this overload only participates in overload resolution for unsigned types, which isn't shocking. So we need to make this an unsigned type, which, yeah, I, I accept that. So there we go. If we do that, then we get two returned. And this, I think, is a, it does quite a bit better job of actually illustrating what our goal is as opposed to, you know, kind of using standard bit set to, to get at the count function that it had. So yeah, the bit header coming in C++20, I expect it will be a lot of help for things that are doing low-level bit manipulation uh, like emulators. So thanks for watching this episode of C++ Weekly.